Chrysler Sicilian and Rigadoon. Now, depending on the edition of the music you're using, you may have different bowings or fingerings marked to me. That is what it is. Fingering has changed with musical fashion and it's largely down to your tone color, your vibrato across your fingers, because we all know that different fingers have different vibrato qualities and what you want to bring to the music or take away from it or how you want to interpret it. So I, I would say listen to as many different recordings of this as you can so that you're exposed to a wide variety of interpretations and styles. And from that you decide what you want to take away from each performance or what you thought was beautiful about that or ugly about that or what you want to emphasize. But you need that exposure in order to make informed choices about what you're doing, not just to play the notes and go, oh yeah, I played an F and then I played a B and then I played a C, because that's not actually music. So what I am going to do here is the nuts and bolts, not the music. Um, you're going to have to go and do your own research and put your own time and energy into developing your musicianship. So when I look at the Sicilian, I can see it's very short. It's a repeated theme. It's in two sections, a little bit like Musette back in book two. Um, it's in D major, also like Musette back in book two. Oh, that's weird. And uh, it's lyrical and expressive and it has a variety of bow textures, a variety of rhythms, and it's got trills and grace notes as our obvious ornaments. So let's have a little play. It's starting on an F sharp with an anacrusis upbeat, so we would use an up bow. Okay, good, I'm, I'm glad you already knew that. One, two, three, four, five. Repeat. I like second there. First. First. said your bowing may have different uh, your edition may have different bowing um, make it about what you will phrase it how you want I think the most important thing when you're playing this is to be expressive and that means varying your tone color and building your phrases now when we look at the rigadoon we basically have a bunch of scales hmm. still F major but a lot of accidentals to contend with we're starting with that nasty anacrusis again don't know why it's nasty it's an anacrusis whatever it's a big sniff
So just in that first phrase, you need to watch out for the little hitch in the bow. And then find your balance point. So you vary your texture. Soppy. Attach. Now, if you think you're going to have dramas with fingers, knowing where a fourth finger is for, pick up a pencil and write it in for oh, the love of God. Otherwise, you're just going to waste time every time you play it going, oh, oh yeah, that thing. Don't stumble. Be proactive. Fix the mistakes before they happen. So let's just play that much again, just because if you have any intonation errors in there, they'll just repeat throughout the piece. So we're listening for those resonant third fingers and fourth fingers. This especially. It's got a ring. If you're playing... It just sounds crappy. So make sure the posture is supported and that the fourth finger can drop onto the string. You shouldn't be banging your fingers down. They should just be responding to gravity. Your muscles aren't really involved. And... your forte will slow down because it's the first time make sure in there that you leave the fingers on that you can leave on for economy's sake so little hop leave the one on here in my music I've just realized I don't have bar numbers but I use my G sharp second finger G sharp edge it up to an A natural second position and I stay in second now Stay in second position for the first slur of the next bar. One, two, three, four, one, four, three, two. And then I edge back a semitone. And here you can edge back up if you need to. Or you can take the crossing. There are recordings of both versions. It probably depends how dexterous you're feeling with your bow and where you would like to highlight the phrase. Okay, so this feeling of is different too. And they lend themselves to different hand shapes and physiques as well. If you have a broader hand, then you're probably very happy to play it in first position. If you have a narrower hand, then keeping it in second position is more efficient for your fingers to drop on. They'll have a better frame. Let's play again from the bar where we shift into second position. Shift. Now you get your accents ready for the next part. Yada da 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 da. It's really punchy. That's awful, isn't it? Let's play it slowly, note by note. G sharp. Again. And you need to make your choices with fingering there, whether you want to bring a first finger up or if you want to push it back, how are you going to play the 
B sharp, which would be really nice, a C natural. But strangely enough, when we look at it in music and it's written as a B sharp, I at least tend to play it with my first finger because it's a B. If it was written as a C natural, I would instinctively play it with my second finger. So you have some choices to make there. If you're going to play, use the high third finger for the D sharp. Using a high one for the B sharp kind of feels good. It's really up to you. I tend to spread, I think, there and have an extended feeling. Three, one, three, one, A, two, low one. I use my second finger for the B sharp here. So I've got my third finger for the C sharp. And just at the end of that last, at the, bar, at the top of the page here, I edge up with my first finger to C sharp. Stay in second now. Come back. So a few choices to make, I think, in that line, just about whether you're going to have an extended feeling and a high first position feeling or whether you're going to crop back and play everything in half position. It's your call. I would pencil it in both ways and play it both ways a few times and work out what's better in your hand. Let's play again from the top of the page. Three, two, D, two, one, three, one, two, da, 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 from there. chunk we've recapitulated we've played our beginning again oh no C natural I can't play that with just an extension 4343 three. I have to shift you might be happy to play I need to shift there because otherwise my hand hates me Four two. Mm -hmm. and then it kind of makes sense just to stay in second and then I just stay there because I'm lazy. And then I get a half position on the A. And then I edge back into first. Watching out for the C naturals in the next bar. Okay, things have changed. So again, the shape of your hand is going to influence the way you play this. If you have a broader hand, you might just extend. And then you could extend here too. It's really up to you. I'm gonna take the second position, stay in second, stay in second, go to half position. Wow. So let's play again from the repeat sign or the semi-quaver before the repeat sign. Make sure you play it as a semi-quaver, okay? Don't put a quaver in there. It's a feeling of da 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 da. It adds momentum and urgency to the phrase. And again because they are not the same as they were on page one. The finger's different. One, two. Again. easier if I look for a pattern. So in that first bar of semiquavers, I look at it and say, oh, the second note of every group is on the G. And then I think, da, 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 da. And that just helps my brain get around what's going on. Again. 
In the second bar, I know that the pattern's the same as it was on page one, and I've already practiced that a lot of times, so it's an easier transition for me. Let's go on and play the trills. Nothing gnarly in there, just keep an eye out for the accidentals, okay? Now, when I look at the next part, I can see that I can't play it in, third, in first position, so I must have to go to, already gave the answer away, third position. So on that E, that's when you want to shift. This is a spot where it's worth checking out your tones and semitones. I don't know why, but people just seem to get that third finger wrong. That's an F sharp. You might come down here, I don't know. I'd probably stay out because it's penis smooth. Flip up. on the road right so let's go again from the bar before all our slurs kick back in we're going to play from here the G sharps I get a second position. And this is where you need to do your research. What's that top note? It's an octave higher, that's all. Okay, that might be the, the good spot to practice, right? Getting from the four. Uh, you need to know how far you're going and you need to make sure that you know that from here so that you can release your thumb. Only my thumb and the tip of my forefinger touching and you have the rotation available in your shoulder to bring the hand around. Pizzicato, which I'm not doing because my fingers are freezing. Um, so this is just a walkthrough for intonation purposes, really. I have put the accents in, but you're going to need to work on the bow and how you enunciate with your right hand fingers to facilitate those notes. For goodness sake, pick one color and mark all your shifting in the one color. Then use a second different color and mark your tones and semitones in that color. I talked about this in Broder as well. It lets you shift your focus really easily. You go, okay, I'm gonna do a run through thinking just about the shifting, focused, focused on the shifting. That's the red stuff, great. And you kind of tune out the other stuff that's going on. You just focus on your shifting and your sequences. And then you go, well, I, okay, well, I got the shifting, but there are some really weird notes in there. So now let's play it again, really focused on the intonation, which will mean the semitones and tone relationships, which, and you might have marked the problematic ones for yourself in blue. So you go, okay, blue filters on, let's go. I think that when you are learning music, you, you always have to be picky. 
but music that has challenging finger frame changes, just little gnarly bits in it, that type of hygiene about marking up your music is so helpful. So make sure you've always got a pencil, a red pen, a blue pen, a black pen, a green pen, yellow pen. I don't know how many colors you need, that's up to you. But see if you can use that to help your method as you're learning rather than just constantly squiggling stuff on your music because things then get lost and it's difficult to practice with your filters on. I hope that's of help to you. As I said, uh, you need to listen to a multitude of different versions of this to decide what you want to put in your version. So listen to as many interpretations as you can, decide what tone colors you like, what you think is ugly, what you think is too fast, what you think is too slow, where the speed should vary, where it needs to be held accountable to a solid tempo, and then work those qualities into what you want to achieve.